guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig and I'm here with somebody I have a lot of history with and one of the best magicians and creators in the world today, the one and only JM, Justin Miller. I, I am so excited to be here. I'm going to tell you something right now, Craig. It's been about, um, what, about 12 years since our last uh, our meeting mm -hmm. over online and everything. Mm -hmm. And I was, going to, um, I was going to show up for this interview with a bandana thing and I was ready to like, but I couldn't, and I'm too lazy to look for things right now. So I couldn't find what I wanted. So I thought it would have been funny though. I thought it would have been funny. <laughs> What's you're, up, mate? How you doing, brother? I'm good. I'm so glad that you're on this. I really yeah, I'm really, I'm thrilled, dude. I think this is, it's great for both of us, honestly, but uh, it's, it, you and I have not really ever done this. We met, people might not know this, uh, but we met, um, in 2007, 2008 ish at the IBM SAM convention, Kentucky. the combined convention in Kentucky. Mm -hmm. Um, I remember you were working either for Teo magic or at his booth. It, well, magic shop. Yeah. It was at his booth. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah. I just bought out a whole bunch of coin stuff. I bought out the flip flipper coin stuff and, and the bag, the, the, the bag, bag thing uh, yep. and the mirage coin set. Yeah. That's right. That. The mirage coin set. That's a good coin set. I do remember that. Yeah. That's a good coin set. Yeah. Definitely. And I think I showed you Legend that first time, right? That was the first time I saw Legend. Yeah. I was absolutely blown away. But I'd known your stuff beforehand because I'd been a big mm. fan of the stuff that you put out through Cosmo. Yes. Um, oh, my goodness. Holy shit. That was... Uh, it was the Strolling Hands set. Strolling Hands uh, Volume 1 and 2 was my very first kind of, you know, <clears throat> here's Justin Miller magic folks kind of moment. At the same time, though, I had already filmed Silver Dream with Illusionist. So I had this, it was, it was weird. I had this competing suit, tailored suit, um, family married guy coming out set. You know what I mean? A mm -hmm. Restaurant magician, trade show magician, whatever, private party. And then I had the grungy Justin Miller. <laughs> you know, it was very strange living those two parallel lives through, um, through two different companies. It was, very, it was really bizarre. And it is, you had, so, you had a different image in each one. And you, one thing that you've done all through your career, you've reinvented yourself over and over again. Absolutely. I have, I, that is a mantra of mine that it's become that um, you, you, I'm a strong believer. You have to reinvent yourself. You have to adapt just like through COVID. There are so many magicians, you and I were talking pre-show to this, but there are so many magicians that either just gave up or whatever, got other jobs or whatever. And I totally understand what people have to do what they have to do, but God damn it, there is this thing called adapting and adapting is how human beings, the, the, the best human beings, the best survivors, look, uh, you know, history is written by the winners, not the losers, right? So oh. the best people adapt to become what they become. Um, I've adapted like crazy here. I mean, everything's changed with the studio and everything, but it put a fire under my ass. But even back in the day, um, I was kind of, like I was talking about, I was kind of forced to adapt because I was working for two different companies and two different images and two different, you can see which one won out, by the way, <laughs> which mm -hmm. one I went, <laughs> mm -hmm. did the most projects with. Um, and that was a smart choice on my part because I knew there was a bigger audience, obviously, and it was a different audience. And um, Cosmo introduced me to the magic scene properly as far as this kid is a classic magician. He, it's not just some grungy whatever. And that's when that grungy thing was really starting to come out. So I was very fortunate that that image came out first because that truly is who I am. That's what I, those, that's the magic I love, the, the classics and uh, caps and, uh, uh, you know, and uh, cylinder and coins and stuff like that. I love that kind of stuff. I have a heart for it. And you did, um, you did a lot of the stuff at the, at the jailhouse uh, uh, set. God, well. jailhouse was such a great, great time man yeah. oh. and a lot of people thought of you as just a restaurant magician you know yes just that kind of guy and that's you know you completely eliminated that and 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 yeah when you went with e and, and you went with illusionist you blew up man you blew up big time yeah silver dream fucking put me on the goddamn map dude it was crazy man we sold six thousand units in one week 
Um, and back in the day, you have to understand that was a huge thing because the, the, Murphy's wasn't buying in big units at that time. There was no like 300 or 400 unit sale at that time. That was in the very beginning of a, when all this DVD stuff and everything was happening. Um, I was very fortunate to be at the very ground of all that. I, I get so many emails and PMs of people saying, it's because of you I got into magic. I found you and that's how I, and I'm like, whoa, because it was Slydini or Goshman for me. You know what I mean? Like, like it's it's kind of crazy to uh to to live through the genesis of that and 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 be one of the founding persons or people to 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 bring it to this level. Yeah, it's bizarre, man. It's really bizarre. I will say this: every time you reinvent yourself, you go through a psychological um, change as well. <laughs> so it's um, just make sure you're strong enough to go through it. <laughs> because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I was because you have to fucking remember, dude. I was going through a divorce at that time, during that time, not exactly that time. But uh, I was going through a divorce. I was losing my children. I w it, was a, it was a fucking nightmare, man. Freedom Pack was the first trick I created coming back into the magic community after I fucking left for what? Yeah. what, what five, you, you four years. You just completely left the community for a long time, didn't you? Yeah, for about three to four years. Yeah, yeah. totally. Uh, disappeared like a motherfucker. I, dude, I was, I, was, I was depressed. I was thinking about killing myself every single day. I was, I was, I was in such a bad place, man. I, was, I mean, I just lost my seven-year marriage, you know? I just lost my children. I just lost my, my entire life was about to change. And I don't even know how bad for, for as long as it was going to be. And the thing is, I was always one of those people, anytime I reinvented myself, I always shared it with you guys. I shared it with the magic community. That was one of my things. That was, I, I, people used to call me the, the, um, the Dane Cook of magic because I, I was always open to people who would ever want to talk to me, whatever. I never charged anything. I just was there always willing to give advice, willing to give information out for free and just help people. And that's what Dane Cook did through MySpace. That's why Dane blew up like a motherfucker. Dane, yeah. blew, he was the first one to be able to use social media in that way. And I, and I think I was the first one to use social media in that way for the magicians. Um, but during that time, like I said, you know, I was going through just a horrible, horrible experience. And so every time you go through another part of you or you find another part of you, you can reinvent. Because all I'm, to reinvent yourself, you're really just taking away from something that's already there, but you haven't formed and shaped it yet. When something else dies, you can then form and shape that next thing. And you really do have to do it that way. You, you have to kind of, I was JM for a while. I was Justin Miller for a while. I, do you know what I mean? Like you have different competing. And I would always use how people knew me by what they called me. So JM would be always be the party guy. He'd always be the, the, the edgy guy. He's always the guy who's kind of an asshole. That's JM. Justin Miller to me was Justin Miller. This is the, the, the exposure of who I am. The, 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 the um, not innocence, not at all, but the, um, uh, the sensitivity of sharing information about my life with other people. And the reason I say all of that is to say, people will use that, they use that against me. So when I told people that I was going through my divorce, when I told people I wasn't a Christian anymore, when I told people I left the church, and when I told people I went to prison, they fucking used all of it against me. So what I had thought I had built up was a nice fan base and people who, um, who cared about me. What I, what I found drastically different immediately was people do not care about your success. They don't want to hear about it. They don't want to hear about it. They truly don't. They say they do. They don't really want to hear about it because they immediately judge themselves by whatever you're doing. It's a very unhealthy thing to do, but that's what humans do. And so I found that immediately. There were blogs written about me. Like people took their fucking time. Like I, and I guess at first I was just like, oh, this is horrible. This feels horrible. I'm a human. I'm, I'm still human. Like, uh, do you guys know what you're, but then I was like, you know what? And this is where the reinventing of, of I, kind of where I am right now. I was like, you know what? At least they're fucking talking about me. I mean, it's the Barnum and Bailey fucking thing. They're talking about me. Okay, fuck it. Fuck it. And then I just started being more open than they were being open about me. So then people really got to know the real me. And it's weird, Craig, because my fan base and my customer base and my whatever base you want to call it, my students and everything went to a totally different level when I started cussing in public when I started to reveal my true self and reveal things about true and, and just not have a filter, but people have to understand I was going through that myself for the first time. Mm -hmm. So it's training wheels for me too. 
Um, but, and of course, it's, I think it's refreshing when people just tell the truth, right? And you hear someone tell, you know what, man, fuck, I believe the same thing. People respond to that a lot differently. Yeah. So I think that's, it's, it's a reinventing yourself. It's a whole, it's like a whole, it's, well, it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a very long process and it's a, it's a, you, you have to know what you're doing. You have to know what your next level is. Like at least go, okay, I want to be, get to here. I don't know how to get to here. So I'll start molding myself in a different way to see if I can get to that place. And you left for four years, like you said, you left for yeah. four years, you came back. What is that? There's a lot of people right now. We talked about this off camera. There's a lot of people in the UK. I don't know about in America that are leaving magic. The, the, the COVID mm -hmm. has ended them. They're in a bad place. They've decided to walk away. Some exceptional magicians. Now you mm -hmm. walked away had a lot of really serious personal problems that you were finding it really hard to deal with, but you made it back. So is there yeah. any advice that you can give these magicians that are going through it right now with COVID, you know, based on your own experience? Yeah, man. I mean, I left because I, I, I had, well, everything was taken away, away from me. I didn't have, I was homeless. I mean, it was, it was, it was bad. So I didn't have the ability to, I, I definitely, I wasn't in a good headspace either psychologically. I just wasn't, it was, it was, it was a really bad time. They're leaving because they can't afford it. You know what I mean? Their shows are getting canceled. I look, I lost $50,000 worth of shows when COVID first started. And I lost it. I'll never get it back. I'll never get it back. It's the most, cra I, I, it was bad, dude. I didn't know what I was going to fucking do. I had no clue. So in a way I was, I was kind of in their place where I was stuck in this, this place here going, the fuck am I going to do? I have to do something. Can I sell furniture? No, I'm not going to sell furniture. Think, think, think. So the first thing you have to say, stick to what you know, stick to what you know. And go full head on into that as hard as possible. As hard as possible. Adam and I f first thought was, all right, well, what do we do, man? Well, I don't know, I'm kind of bored and not just bored, but like, I'm, I'm kind of creative right now and I want to get, uh, talk to magicians. It's like, well, why don't we just do lectures? All right, let's do lectures. We knew we couldn't charge for those lectures. We knew we couldn't charge for those lectures. But we also knew very uh, smartly, I almost fucked that word up. Um, I don't even know if smart was a word. Actually, I made it up. Haha. If fucking Little Wayne can make up fucking uh, the fucking um, bling, fucking I can make up fucking smartly. Fuck it. So <laughs> I won't sell a million records, but uh, I'll just get a million views. Um, what were we talking about? What was this? <laughs> what was it? You were going out with Adam. You knew you couldn't. You know yeah, yeah, yeah. You so, so, but we did know what we smartly knew uh, is that. Thank you, by the way. Is that? Um, these could be people that we could go back to later once everything had gotten to wherever it's going to be where people had money again and that's what i'm doing right now i'm literally going back to those people and saying listen i have a totally different lecture here's my price i'm going to give you a nice COVID price too but i'm going to charge you've already seen what what i can do who i am and that changed everything so did i have to wait seven fucking months i did i absolutely did did i have to fucking and still fucking struggle, struggling like crazy, like everybody else is, right? But you have to learn how to adapt in the hardest times of your life. When you learn how to adapt, the best part of you comes out during those moments. But you have to also know where the goal is. Again, you don't know how the paths it's gonna take to get there. You have no fucking clue, but you know what the goal is. So I, th that's my best advice for people like that. Don't give up either, oh my dear Jesus holy fuck do you know how long it took me to uh, fucking uh, keep doing magic and, and and keep performing when i was younger and nothing happened and nothing happened and nothing happened and and i'm like but wait a minute i've been doing this my entire life why why is nothing really happening yes i was getting shows yes but it was there was another there was no moment and i didn't know my moment hadn't come yet i just it, it wasn't there for me and uh finally you know it was there with illusionist yeah illusionist changed everything for me everything now, here's the thing. You have released so much magic. It's ridiculous. Self-published. <laughs> and I want to talk about creativity with you in a bit. Yeah. Before I do, uh, what I love about you is you're like me. You're honest completely about but like you or don't like you. You know you're going to get it fucking straight, right? That's right. So you have worked with a lot of probably more magic dealers than anyone else. Mm -hmm. Like you've done everyone. You've done Penguin. Mm -hmm. You've done Illusionist. You've done mm -hmm. everybody. 
Mm -hmm. Which was your favorite? You know, what made you leave? Because when you left E, that was like a big deal because you were the poster boy for... Well, I was. It was. It was myself, Garcia, and uh, Wayne Houchin. Yeah. We were, it was you three. You were like the the three the three that like propped up the whole of Illusionist, and then one hundred percent. We we one hundred percent. We were the we were the guys who just said, "Give us a chance," and <clears throat> and that was it. Yeah, it was really weird. Um, they were all for different reasons for every single company. Um. Penguin was a righteous reason. Penguin was a righteous reason. I will never, ever would want to be associated with that company or the people for that company, ever, ever. Um, illusionist was for, it was, a, it was a totally different reason. It wasn't, look, Brad, Brad does this whole, every 10 years, it's a new a crew. And I love that model, by the way. If you, if you notice, it's 100% true. Look at it. It was me and Halchin and Garcia. Then it became uh, Adam Wilbur and Daniel Madison and Peter McKenna. And then it became, do you know what I mean? And now it's, 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 it's boom, 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 boom. So every 10 years, Brad changes it up, man. Just changes it up. And I think it was my time at that time to, to leave and to venture out. I already had a name. I could use that for its own purpose, me and David Williams. Let me pick that name up real quick. Sorry about that. Me and David Williamson were, were talking one night at a magic convention in the wee hours of the morning, smartly, by the way. And uh, I, was, I was like, you know, illusionist, illusionist, illusionist. And he goes, listen, man, illusionist did exactly what it was supposed to do for you. It got you on the map. Now you got better new things to, to, to go for. You're going to be fine. And I'm like, oh, I was like, all right, that makes sense. And I just felt that mantra the entire time. But if you notice, I went back to illusionist. A couple of different times recently um, with the sleeping DVDs or uh, downloads and everything and the bold project. So um, I, 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 illusionist is the reason that people know who I am in the magic world. There's no question, no question whatsoever. Cosmo was the reason people knew who I was in the magic cafe world. <laughs> those, those kind of magicians. <laughs> <Magic> uh, <laughs> we, we know about those kind of magicians. <laughs> Fuck those kind of magicians. <laughs> Pieces of shit. Um, I actually got banned. My favorite band, though, is from the cafe. Because really? I called, I, yeah, I called Steve Brooks Hitler and his, um, and his, um, his, his, uh, his little croonies over there that worked for him. Uh, uh, I called them uh, uh, slave traders. So I thought that was appropriate to get banned for life. <laughs> Hey, yeah, that Fuck them, it. dude. I, you know what, man? The cafe, leaving the cafe was the greatest thing I ever could have done. Seriously, yeah. man. It's the worst thing to like become a person that is known and then you just get into fights with people and they, because they're either fighting you because they, they get the street cred for fighting the person who's known or they, they get street cred for just what, whatever. You right, know what and me. You know what pisses me the fuck off, and I did a video on this. What pisses me off is nine times out of ten on the cafe, the people that come after you and write the shit that really hurts, they're hiding behind a fake profile. They mm. haven't even got the fucking balls. Yeah, I agree completely. Say, you know, yeah, you and I went back at went at it back in the day. But we did it like fucking men, dude. We made it's videos. Like, we called each other out. Exactly. We were yeah. fucking men. Exactly. <laughs> Nobody can hide and go, all right, Craig, I'm not going to show my face, but. Exactly. Exactly. And that's my issue with them. I'd have some respect for them if they actually manned up and said, look, this is who I am and this is what I think. But yeah. I don't take anybody's opinion seriously if they're hiding behind a fucking fake profile. I agree. Or like just that top hat fucking picture or whatever. <laughs> it's like, yeah. come on, stop, man. Stop. You, you mean nothing to me. You mean nothing to this conversation until yeah. you're willing to not be anonymous and, 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 and stop faking your entire life, okay? Stop it. You're not doing yourself any better, right? So I'll go after them like that. That's my, so I like, to, I like to fuck with people in a different way. Like I'll, I'll fight people, especially like when it comes to like um, the written word, like through the internet or through like, let's say scam artists like or online or not online, but like on phones. So like the Indian scams were like, this is the IRS, right? This is that whole thing. One of my favorite things to do, people, because they, they expect people to get mad, right? And yell at them. I just pause and I go, let me ask you a question, man. Do you have, do you have kids? Do you have a family? 
They're like, you have kids? And I'm like, wow, you have kids. That's crazy. So you're teaching your kids how to steal from people. Wow, man. Your daughter, your son. What Daughter or son? They're like, daughter. And it's funny. Some people go, don't fuck your mother. They'll do whatever. But some people will be like, yeah. I'm like, yeah, man. Boy, this is how, you, this is how they're going to see you for the rest of their lives. That They think it's okay to steal. And you're going to put them in jeopardy at some point where their life might be a jeopardy where they stole something and they might actually get killed or hurt. And you did that to them. That's crazy. But you have an opportunity not to do that. Maybe go out tomorrow and get a better job. Yeah, it's not going to pay as much. And I know where you're living right now is hard, but boy, oh boy, oh boy. I don't know, man. How can you sleep at night? And then usually they're like, oh, oh whatever. See you later. And I'm like, yeah, exactly. Fuck you. I was, I was getting ready to take a shower. Fuck you. I was trying to get ready for the day. I will fuck with you that way. Because, yeah, I'm speaking truth, but at the same time, I'm twisted and fucked up in the head to go, yeah, I just fucked that person's day up. <laughs> and you know what? You, you will... And the cafes become that kind of thing, you know what I mean? It has. Yeah. And you, you, I have so much respect for you because if you see something that you feel is a justifiable cause, you will go at that 100 fucking percent. And we were yeah. talking just off camera, you know, how many YouTube channels did you shut down? How many videos did you take down when you were going against piracy? Yeah, maps, magicians against piracy. I had, I had just had it up to that point because I had had over, I think at that point I already had already like $8 million stolen from me through illegal downloads, through knockoffs from China and India and fucking Singapore and all these fucking thieving fucking countries. And when I say that, folks, I know you fucking morons who are out there who don't understand what I'm saying. So let me be very specific and clear. I am not calling all of Chinese people morons. I am not calling all of Indian people and uh, India people and China people thieves. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that your piece of shit fucking country supports the thievery and distribution of other people's work uh, in a way that is, is in incredibly disrespectful and it hurts us as creators because we lose fucking money you're stealing money from us you're taking away from my family i don't have a family anymore but i have kids my son has cancer my son has tumor growing out of his side a lot of people you don't know that i haven't seen my you know what i mean i have to take care of all these things you're taking money out of my fucking kids fucking life you're taking money out of my life taking money out of my bills of course i'm gonna go 100 percent after this and i just got fed up with it and i created maps magicians against piracy and my uh, customers and i was a broker basically so what i would do on behalf I, I was like well how do i get these how do i get these videos down i would call you i'd get a hold of youtube and they're like yeah we're gonna, unless you got a copyright thing unless you got permission i'm like permission okay so I created a broker, a broker company, which was Magicians Against Piracy. And for a small fee, I would take down your, I would call you and get a hold of you and say, listen, there's 15 expo exposure videos of yours. There's 27 uh, downloads of yours. There's whatever, whatever, whatever. And we're talking about Martin Lewis, Richard Sanders, Patrick Kuhn, uh, Rick Lax even. Uh, we actually used to be cool at one point. Um, who's the other uh, clients? Jeff McBride was a client. Um, uh, so there's so many different magicians that were clients of mine and it was real simple. It's 50 bucks, 50 bucks per video, 100%. Look, they, they, they were getting 2 million views on one exposure video. You know how much money they're losing right there? 50 mm -hmm. bucks a video is nothing at that point. So I wanted to make sure that people understood that it was a real viable thing. And it really was. We took the, I did, I took down 18,000 YouTube channels and over 50,000 videos. Um, my most, my most cherished moment during that company was when I went after, um, the magic castle website. And I don't mean the magic castle in Hollywood, California. There's a, um, Singaporean, um, web or Filipino, I'm sorry, Filipino website called the magic castle. And it's all knockoffs and the legal downloads and they just refilm everything and repackage it and they put it out and they put our names on it and we get jack shit for it and they raise the price like a motherfucker well what i found they were doing was they were using all youtube videos to show the trailer well i had realized at that time all i had to do was get three strikes on their channel and i can get their fucking channel deleted so i purposely got rid of every single one of their trailers 
and they and they literally emailed me and they're like um so we're sorry um we see that you're not fucking around um so what do we have to do here? <laughs> and I was like, God, oh, wow, this actually fucking worked. Like, and this was the biggest one in, in, in um, the Philippines. And, and there were so many people, see, a lot of people don't know this too, but there's a lot of American magicians who are retailers that get that shit from there too. And they're, they're fucking circumventing this whole thing and keeping us out of the loop twice. So then we don't even get paid twice now. We don't get paid from the actual distributor of the American company and they go there to get it cheaper and we don't get paid through them either. So we're losing twice on one sale. And that's all of us. Your stuff, my stuff, your stuff's been there. I've, I've seen all of it, man. It's, it's, and, and you're like, what do you do? So I started this company, did as best I could, man. But the thing was, I wasn't creating magic during that time. I wasn't focusing on creativity. I wasn't doing anything. I wasn't performing. And I was just, this was, I would put my full effort into this. And it got, I got burned out, dude, after like two fucking years. I got so burned out. I and imagine. I wasn't creating, I wasn't doing anything. And I was like, I got to sell this. I got to do something with this. And so somebody asked uh, to, if they wanted to, uh, if they would buy it, if they, how much I gave them the price and they told me to go fuck myself. I'm like, well, all right, it's fine. Whatever. You don't understand what, all, everything that goes through. And I had, I was the only person that did it. You know, I didn't have a team. So I'd every waking day, dude, all day, all night, I would just find videos and then call people and say, this is what's going on. Um, so, and, but then I just realized that every time you take five down, 10 more pop up. Yeah. And I, we, we were too far into technology to where it is at that point. Uh, and maps was what, 2009, mm -hmm. 2009. Yeah. Um, we were too far into technology and the well-oiled machine I had to become, it had become with YouTube and with exposure videos that I, I was literally jumping into a ship that, was had this much left out of the water and I was trying to throw the water out. <laughs> nope. That motherfucker's going down. Yeah. And, um, and it did, it blew up and it, and what do you do, man? What are you going to do? So now I don't give a fuck, dude, steal, have fun, enjoy. I'll make props though, that you can't fucking make. And I'll make gimmicks that you can't fucking make and you can't sell it because it's going to be, you try to sell it to your customers uh, like pyro, Adam Wilbur's thing, dude, have you seen the knockoffs? They're the most dangerous pieces of things I've ever seen in my life, dude. Whoa. Yeah. I'll post. <laughs> so you're going to force the customer now to be pissed off at the knockoff companies and have to go to people like Adam, to people like me, to people like illusionists or whatever yourself and buy the actual fucking trick and support the goddamn creators. Look, I don't give a fuck if you don't like the creators. If you like their magic, support them. Who cares? Absolutely. Now talking about uh, creating, yeah. You mentioned it before, but I want to circle back on this. You got a chance to work with Paul Harris. Mm. The Freedom mm. Pack. How was that? Well, Freedom Pack and First Hand. Oh yeah, yeah, of course. I forgot about it. you were the you were the uh, you guys were the main UK. Um, you were the overseas uh, um, authorized distributor of um, yeah. of First Hand. You guys didn't you? Were you guys the yeah. first ones? Yeah. Yeah. They were. That was great. Dude, I, what a fun, fun ride it's been with Paul Harris, man. Um, God, Papa Paul. Papa Paul. Um, you asked in the beginning, and we're kind of circumventing this a little bit, but you asked in the beginning about the companies I like, the companies I've worked for and all that stuff. I have nothing bad to say about working with Paul Harris. I have nothing but good and happiness and joy and, and the beautiful creation that he is. Um, Paul is an enigma. Paul is uh, just the way his mind works and the way his brain works. I remember uh, um, double deception, no, not double deception. What was uh, solid deception? Solid deception was the very first Paul Harris trick that I ever did. I was like nine years old, nine or 10 years old. I remember doing that trick in school and stuff. Oh, God, so good. And uh, working with Paul is a dream, man. It's just a dream, an absolute dream. Is that all right? Is that, is that good to say? All right, cool. He's got a gun right here. I just want to. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. So, <laughs> no, you... it's not a gun. It's not a gun. It's a mushroom. And he's like, "We're going to eat this a little bit later." <laughs> <laughs> so you you have released so much magic. I want to talk to you about creativity because uh -huh. one of the things that I think about when I think of you is you've released so many tricks, but 
they're all good or mm. they all they really are you never released one that i can go that's complete and total clunker you, you look at somebody okay i'm gonna say it. you look at somebody like jay sankey mm -hmm. and he's got mm -hmm. to a point now where it's very hit and miss I literally said this in the lecture last night. I was with the uh, wa the Waterford guys. I said, I said, how many fucking times can you do Mr. Clean's coins across with different objects, and it's still not the same fucking trick? Yeah, this is getting this is getting ridiculous. And with Sankey, he's so prolific and he's so creative and he's so brilliant. He really is. But Sankey went the other route. Sankey went for the likes, views, and subscribe route. So when you go that route. You have to fucking keep putting something out. You have whatever's in your head. Blah, blah, blah. I don't care if it's fucking, I don't care if it's somebody else's. Blah, 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 blah. And you just, you're, you're a machine and you keep doing it. So someone needs to push pause on the machine for Sankey and go, dude, dude, like the past 17 things you put out, no. And also it's in this book, it's in this book, it's in this book or whatever, or whatever. Cause I've seen that uh, with Sankey. Um, again, brilliant guy. I have nothing but amazing things to say about Sankey as his mind, who he is, but he definitely went the other route. And um, it's about views, likes, and subscribes now. It is. But you're, you, uh, you know, if, you, if we use Sankey, let's use Sanders as an example, because you mentioned mm. him earlier. There's a guy that when he releases something, you know, it's going to be good. And he doesn't. Absolutely. There's not a bad fucking Sanders trick. 100%. Yeah. And you remind me of him in the, mm. it, you, you have more output, but it's still very high level. You know that you're going to get, quality when you get a JM product. Well, you haven't seen the stuff I don't put out. <laughs> and that's what I want to ask it. That's what I'm asking. How, from a creativity point of view, you must have probably forgotten more tricks than you've created. Mm -hmm. Like how, mm -hmm. what's the creative for people watching this that want to learn to create their own magic tricks? Mm -hmm. How, how do you approach it? What do you do? Is there any advice you can give on this? Mm, boy, that's the million dollar question, right? I've always been asked this question ever since uh, people saw my brain work. Um, there's a short answer, long, long answer. Short answer is there's no possible way to convey to any one person how someone does something and brings something into light. We can only give glimmers of the overall process. And even that's not a process. It just happens. It's not a, there's not a, there's not a sit down moment. And I'll tell you right now, every time I've ever tried to just sit down and I go, okay, I'm going to create something fucking shit comes out there's nothing but one of the things i would say and this is a strong advice i know adam wilber gives as well have things around you out just have them out there's a reason why this looks this way there's a reason why all this stuff while well, these coins are here this dice are here because when you have these things out and also this is my setup for my lecture but still when you have things out, you can start playing with things a lot easier. You can look at something and go, hmm. Or I might see, I might see a, a coin laying on a card a certain way and I'll be like, well, that's an interesting image it's creating there. I wonder if I could, what would happen if that image was turned around, what it would look like then? Or, or there might be sometimes, again, it's, it's just a weird fucking thing that just happens. Uh, the water bottle, many times I'll, this will be like a, in a weird way, like a poor man's crystal ball. And what I mean by that, there's been many times I've looked through a water bottle and I'll see the distorted image of what's behind it. And I'll have an idea for something with the idea of the image I saw. So, and then, and then the process to come up with whatever that is, is a whole different thing. Um, so, so the first thing I could say, is just have things out to play around with. Don't put things away, just have them out. You never know when an idea is going to hit you. You never know. And I also, and I know people don't like to hear this. I also don't think everybody's supposed to be creative. I, 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 you know, I'm not a big fan of saying, here's a, a creativity workshop and everybody, per, every person will be able to unleash their creativity. Well, what if fucking everybody's not creative, man? I don't know how to do plumbing. I have no fucking clue how to do plumbing. No fucking clue. You know who does? A fucking plumber. You know who I call? A fucking plumber. Yep. I, I don't know how to fucking do uh, fucking NASA fucking math. I don't know how to do fucking rocket science. I have no fucking clue how to do it. You know who does? Rocket scientists. I let them do it. So this idea that we are, and again, this is not pointed towards any one person. This is the, this is the uh, generation of, uh, or the, the decade of the self-help type of thing. 
of everybody's creative or the participation participation words, everybody's creative, everybody's this, everybody's this. No, we're fucking not. No, we're fucking not. Men are men, women are women. Some people have dicks, some people have pussies, some people are creative, some people are not creative. Some people can make a tiramisu, some people can't make a tiramisu. Now, the way you find out if you're creative is start doing things that, that have, um, so let's say you don't know how to do something, right? So let's say I don't know how to make a tiramisu. I've never done it my entire life, right? And I'll get a tiramisu that's already made from a professional and I'll eat it. I'm like, okay, that's what it's supposed to taste like. And then I will go and try to make a fucking tiramisu. And then I'll eat it and I'll see if it tastes the exact same way. If it doesn't and it's horrible and I don't know what the fuck I'm doing and I keep trying over and over again, I got to say to myself, I don't know how to make a tiramisu apparently. Yep. But I think too many people get caught up that there's everybody's got a creative thing in their head. And then if they just unlock it, it's just, I don't believe that. I just don't believe it. I've lived on this earth too long to fucking see the, the complete opposite. Yeah. Yeah. So um, it's um, so, so I have to say that, but if you do find it's that exactly you're creative, right. yeah. But if you do find you're creative, have things to play around with all that stuff. Also meditation is a really good idea. Just, and I, I don't mean like sitting in a mantra type on anything like that. You literally could meditate for 10 seconds. And what I mean is you just pause and stop no matter what the fuck you're doing. Stop life for a second, close your eyes, Open your eyes and continue your day. If you do those like four or five times throughout the day, you're going to find peace, a little bit more peace every time. You'll be able to handle things differently. You have to learn how to meditate. And there's also longevity of meditation too. We were meditating for like 30 fucking minutes to an hour. I highly suggest that if you're more trained in that as well. Um, that takes a lot more patience, a lot more practice, a lot more timing to be able to really get yourself out of the fucking picture and just kind of focus on the breathing and focus on whatever. Um, people need to refresh themselves a lot more than they refresh their browsers and they just don't do it. Um, but that helps with creativity. Also, um, another thing I can say with, with creativity, the action or the idea of creativity and the action of, of a creative force are two totally different things. In other words, the idea of creativity of coming into something creative or want to be creative is a completely different energy than actually getting into the creative process and doing that creative thing. Um, and those are, and those are two different energies. You have to f try to figure out which one's talking to you because you'll sit down. If you might have the wrong energy and you're, you're going after something that's just not working, you probably have the wrong energy at that point. You're probably still mm -hmm. thinking on the other level of creativity than the actual physical level of it and bringing something to existence. Um, and, and there's a reward. There's a reward. You know this. Whenever you create something that's brand new, it's never been done before. There's a reward, not just from people of your fans and the people who are watching you. And I mean, I mean whether you're an artist of any sort, magician, a musician, a poet, a fucking whatever you're doing. Um, there's a reward inside you that you get to keep locked inside that they don't get to experience. And that also kind of just continues to grow the more you start creating. So there's little things you can listen to yourself and your inner self at that time too. Yeah. Well, here's a question. What out of everything that you've ever created, what's your favorite thing? Mm. And, and you know what? I'm going to tell you what my favorite You know I'm not going to be able to answer this, right? I know, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna push you till you do. Here's okay. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you what my favorite JM product is. Now I, okay. I know, I know a lot of your stuff. Can I guess it? Can I guess it? You'll never guess it. I can I guess it though? Okay. Go for it. Snow days. Nope. Oh, okay, okay. All right. Can give me a year? Give me, give me a year. I put this out. I'll even give you a product, a project, uh, at the table. Okay, the first one or second one. Second one, I think. Well, the one with Eric Ross? Yes. Oh, is it is it is it Tic Tactic? It is. Or Reactic? I carry Reactic. it around with me everywhere. It is the thing I take. I have it in my pocket. It kills. I've done it. I you need to do this right now. I have killed, <laughs> I have killed magicians with this. Destroys. They think it's fucking magnets. They think yeah. it's fucking electronics. Yeah. 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 For some reason, I don't know if people glossed over it because of uh, it was on at the time. I don't know why, but nobody has ever seen this. 
and it's my go-to magician fooler. It's Alan my go-to. Ro- I can't leave the fucking house without that in my pocket. Alan Rorison posted on Facebook because I just got to see uh, Justin Miller's lecture, virtual lecture, and he did the greatest thing I've ever seen. He, saw, he did the greatest trick I've ever seen in my entire life. He goes, holy shit, it's worth the price of this lecture. And I was like, wow, man. So, and I, you know, it's funny. So I'll give the story on this real quick. Um, so Paul Harris, Papa Paul likes to call these happy accidents. Happy accidents where you're creating something, you're in the middle of doing whatever, and all of a sudden the object you're using or the, the props you're using do something completely different than what they were even meant to be used for. Something happens, something strange happens where a, a, a combination of, of forces just fucking create this other thing. And you then realize that this thing can now do this thing that you never would have thought fucking possible. And it's the universe just going, all right, here you go. There's a little something for you. <laughs> universe going, here you go. Can't figure this out, can you? Yeah, exactly. We'll be back 10 years later and we'll take your kids away. So <laughs> universe is strange. Um, I don't know if I, I do have Tic Tacs. Hold on one second. I was just using a smoke machine. <laughs> um, so I'm sitting at my desk. <laughs> It's the new mouse smoke machine. It's a new one from um, Merlanda, Johanna Merlanda. Oh, by the way, if you guys don't have this, get this. The Smoke Pro, the second one. Oh, oh, oh. Really? Because the so first good. one was a bag of shit and almost burnt my arm off. Horrible with the battery on the outside. I looked at it. I'm like, what the fuck? Did you guys really put this out and think that this was going to be a good idea? But this one, so much better, dude. Have you seen this one? No. I just, oh, I just immediately just dismissed it. No, 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 don't dismiss it. Don't dismiss it. Don't dismiss it. The battery's on the inside now. It's so good, dude. I wear it all the time. All right, so anyways. Um, I was sitting there, and I was working on some fucking thing or whatever, and I, I was doing something else with my hand here. Then I had this in my hand, and all I was doing was typing or whatever, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, that happened. And I, and I was looking over here and I looked back at the same time because I felt a vibration. And I was like, did that just fucking jump? I didn't see it because I was doing something over here and it went punk. I'm like, did that just fucking jump? <laughs> How the fuck did that jump? The fuck is, wait, 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 hold on. Was this open? Was my finger? And I went like this, and it moved that way. And I'm like, whoa, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. If this works, if this works, if this fucking works. And I started playing with it on this side first. I'm like, then it would move over there. I'm like, okay, it's not jumping up yet. It's not jumping up yet. Then I started doing it in the middle. I was like, oh, it's jumping now. It's jumping now. Okay, 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 okay. Maybe if I go all the way to the other side. Oh, what the fuck? (laughs) And that was it, dude. That was it. So my mind immediately, I'm like, okay, I got to get this filmed. I don't know what the fuck this is right now, but I got to get this filmed. And that's the other thing. If you create something and you think it's new, film it immediately, put a timestamp on it. You have to have that. So if some fuck face goes, oh, I could do it. And you go, you know what, motherfucker? No, you didn't. I did. Ha ha ha. Um, but this was one of those things that was handed to me by the universe. I didn't sit down and go, I wonder how I can make a tic tac jump out of a thing and just do this. And do. I didn't do that. It was just handed to me, and I gra- I, gra- I I gracefully accept it. Thank you, universe. Still, this is I, I agree. This is this is this is so fuck. I've I've fooled every single magician I've ever showed it to, every single one, every convention, every lecture, the top of the dogs. Not one fucking person knew how the fuck this was done. So I remember when I saw it on the at the table lecture, I watched the performance and I had to rewatch it like 10 <laughs> times and I still didn't fucking know. I was convinced there was some sort of electronic thing. Absolutely. Going. Of course. Of course. Anybody, why wouldn't you look at it? It's got to be. And this is around the same time that all those Tic Tac tricks were coming out mm-hmm. uh, with the magnets and everything and the big Tic Tac that one thing had, that one guy had. And so I filmed everything and I was like, okay, well now my first thought was I can use this as a locator thing, right? So you magician in trouble, wrong card goes down somewhere, comes over and as it lands somewhere near the card that jumps. I'm like, oh, what the fuck just happened? Wait a second, wait a second. It wasn't these, it wasn't these, but it wasn't that one either. What was your card? Oh, this is crazy. I told you it was turn over and then boom, it's their right card, right? So you get this boom and then you get the next thing. So it's like, okay, indicator, that's cool, that's cool. 
And I put like three or four ideas together on a download. I put it up for $10 that night. I was so excited about it because I wanted to make sure I knew one or two things was going to happen. The moment I put this out and the community sees it, I'm going to get a fucking email. Uh, yeah, man, that's so-and-so's. It was in page of uh, 1960. And I'll be like, oh, fuck. I knew it was too good, right? One of those moments. Or it'll be like, what the fuck is that? Holy shit, that's the newest thing. What the fuck is happening? So I put it out. It was $10. It was called The Amazing Mind Reading Mint. Because I wanted to have the same kind of feel like the flea circus had. So you could take a flea. You have a trained flea, right? Place it inside. That's his little toy. Go jump up there. There you go. You see, he uses his toy differently. You know what I mean? So I wanted to have that feel to it. Uh, I thought that was kind of cool to bring like a, a flea uh, circus kind of feel to it. Put it out. The very first person who bought it was Chad Long. I put it on my email list. Chad Long was the very first person. Right when I saw that Chad got it, I'm like, oh, fuck. Well, there we go. I'm going to know my answer real pretty goddamn quick. It wasn't like, no disrespect to anybody else, but it wasn't like Joe Schmo, just customer fan of mine. It's fucking Chad Long, right? It's fucking God over here. And I'm like, oh, fuck. All right, I'm going to know. I'm literally going to know within 10 minutes when he watches it, something. And I was like, you know what? I can't, I can't freak myself out about this. The, the, I, I got the, the routine out there, the materials out there. People are gonna know it's mine or it's not mine. We'll figure it out soon enough. And um, I, went out, I went out that night and fucking just had some drinks as I do sometimes. <laughs> and I was so nervous, so nervous. I'm getting ready. All right, just get this off me, get this off me. Because it really was. I mean, it just was, I don't want this to be anybody else's baby. I want to find out this is mine. Do you know what I mean? And I'm getting ready to walk out the door. No bullshit. Phone rings, right? And I'm like, I look at it, it's Chad Long. And I go, I exactly, see that face right there? I was like, oh, fuck. I'm like, well, at least I get to know this before I go out to drink. So now I can just make sure I drink more heavily. <laughs> So I know what my intake's gonna be. <laughs> so I, I I get the phone and I'm very not happy, but I'm also happy to hear from him. Like, hey Chad, what's up, man? He's like, dude. So I gotta talk to you about the thing you just put out. I'm like, yeah, the amazing mind reading man. He goes, yeah, man. Listen to me. I, I you put out so much stuff, but this is the in my mind this is the greatest thing that you've ever put out. And I went like this. I was like. Oh my God, you like it, dude? He's like, yeah, dude, like it. Are you fucking kidding me? This is, this is, this is fucking genius. And he said, I hope you don't mind. I sent it to Michael Weber. And I'm thinking, what, what, what's happening right now? He goes, Michael Weber loves it. He wants to come up with a couple ideas. He's got some things. He's going to get a hold of you through email. And I was like, what the fuck? So then me and Weber started conversing. And Weber goes, he said, Justin, I don't give quotes a lot, but I'll tell you right now, here's my quote. If Martin Gardner was still alive, he would have totally put this in the impromptu um, encyclopedia, encyclopedia of Impromptu Magic. I'm like, God damn, that's a quote. Fuck me. And then Weber came up with some ideas, a splitting one. So you go like this and it boom and it splits into two. Uh, Chad Long's is one of my dearest uh, uh, favorites. It's where you have a couple of white ones. I think uh, I'll send you the download. It has a couple of white ones in there and you take a lighter and then it pops. And when it pops, it's red. Nice. Oh, it's so sexy, dude. Then Wilson got a hold of it. Wilson came up with some ideas for me. And then Mark Salem fucking bought it and he came up with ideas. And the Salem one is this one with the ESP cards. Right. With the billet and everything. So that's how I came up with it, man. It's uh, yeah, that's the whole story. It's and then amazing. And the reason the bird company, me and them don't get along anymore, they bought, um, they were going to buy the rights to this. We had it filmed and everything. And then because they're just a horrible company, um, I lost the footage and everything, didn't get paid, filmed everything. And um, yeah, beyond pissed off. But then I put it out myself with all the ideas from everybody else with it. And then that's why, didn't you notice the, um, the, the jar on the table? Yeah. The ajar. Oh, right. Got it. Okay. <laughs> I didn't pick up on that, but that makes What the sense. hell's a jar doing here? Ugh. Get out of the way. <laughs>
Like it, like it. And it was over. It was over the Tic Tac box. <laughs> but I'm not gonna fucking. I'm not gonna let you get away with this. Right. That's awesome, and that's my favorite trick that you've ever put out. And you put a lot of stuff out. But I still wanted an episode to the question: What's your favorite? What's your favorite creation? Is it that man? Great. Yeah, absolutely. Out of everything I've ever done, uh, the, the, it's it's so simplistic. It's so easy. It's so natural. It's so that the the everything it does it itself it's not you know it's it's weird man it's so strange um and 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 when mark came up when me and mark came up with uh with the uh, the mental effect with it with the ES, esp cards holy shit dude that's probably one of my absolute uh uh hands down with this no question um so many people are buying tic tacs now because of this uh so i got people's breaths to be fresh too it's fun <laughs> win win so so now you know you've yeah. released magic through all these different companies no yeah. uh you've worked with so many different companies now you've got yourself into a into a uh, sort of a place where a lot of the stuff that you create you've just put out yourself and you've got this list of uh customers which i love because as you know i buy a lot of your stuff i'm you a do. Of thank you. you very much in fact you were the very first person to buy the great escape when it came out and, the pre -show. And i want to talk about that in a second <laughs> that fucking blew my mind All but right. i love this and i hate it i love it because there's a lot of magicians that just go and look at what the latest fucking murphy's trick is and mm. you know that's blink of vision it's like if it's not being mm. released through fucking murphy's it then it doesn't exist yeah and that's great because they're never going to see your stuff but it pisses me off as well because more people need to see your stuff so I'm yeah. hoping that the people that are watching this will understand that to get, uh, to get, cause somebody said to me, um, well, he, he hasn't bought anything out for a while. Well, he fucking has. He brings things out all the time. But, Shitload, but, lately, yeah. Yeah, but you just don't know about it. <laughs> yeah. So, and you were the first person to jump on a lot of the, uh, you were doing the online stuff because before it became popular. Yeah, I was the very first one uh, to to show how online could uh, connect. Because look, uh, YouTube was just starting out at that time, and YouTube was, you know, the exposure thing was starting to happen. And I realized that we're losing the mentoring student relationship type thing. And I'm always a student as well. I'm not just always the mentor. I mean, I think we all always are, are learning. And, and, and uh, if we ever say we come to the place we know everything, that we're just lying to ourselves. So I'm a student as well, for sure. Um, but uh, yeah, YouTube was doing its thing. And I realized I'm like, well, Skype was just coming out. Skype was just starting to like fade into existence, right? And I was having some Skype calls with people and I was like, dude, I bet we could get like a Skype. That'd be amazing, right? Set up a table and then boom, 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 boom. And then I just figured out how to do it. And I started charging and it was uh, $50 Skype sessions was the first thing. No, the first thing was uh, the custom DVDs. Do you remember the custom DVDs? I do. I do. Holy shit, dude. That was before YouTube. That was before Facebook. That was before fucking uh, Skype. Custom DVDs. People don't know. There was this little thing called DVDs. Um, and uh, they were really high tech at that point, <laughs> which was only 20 years ago, <laughs> which is really weird. <laughs> we are moving way too fast in this world. Holy fuck shit. Um, we are. We're, mo we're moving too fast to enjoy what, we, what we've created. It's horrible. Um, <clears throat> but uh, I, I figured it out. I was like, okay. I was a stay-at-home dad at the time. I didn't know what I was going to do. I had to keep busy. And I was like, I got a, I got a small name right now. Uh, I think I would put out Strolling Hands at this time when I was doing this, right around Strolling Hands time. So 2004 or five, six, something like that, roughly. Yeah. So... <clears throat> Uh, I was like, well, wait a second. I got this camera here. I can convert anything to DVD. What if I offered to do a custom DVD series? And at that point, people had respected my ideas up, up to that point, which was really interesting to me. That also showed me that people had already got to respect um, <clears throat> my advice and, 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 and what I was uh, showing them, right? They, so... I put on my website at the time, which was closeupjm.com, I believe, or, or closeupartist.com, it might have been. Who knows? Uh, master close-up artist. Who knows? Who knows what the fuck it was? And uh, it was uh, 
I'll teach you or I'll help you with whatever you want to learn or whatever you're working on. So if you want cards, coins, there was a drop down menu. They pick whatever it was $50 per DVD and, and I would make the whole thing. And the whole, the whole catch of it was I'm making a personal DVD for the person I'm talking to. So their name is mentioned multiple times over it. People still have that somewhere. I have no fucking clue who does, but um, that's all like hotcakes, like crazy. Within like a week, I had probably a hundred DVDs I had to do. And that became another problem. It got way too popular too soon and I, could, and I was one person. Mm. So I'd fall behind. And that's where a lot of those rumors in the beginning, Justin Miller doesn't fall through, Justin Miller doesn't ship things. Like that's not at all true at all. People that have, have bought things from me since then will not tell you that. I'm honest about things. I tell you when they're going to be shipped. If they can't ship right away, I'll let you know. It's very clear. I'll give you updates. You're not, you're not in mystery, right? But back then, I didn't know how to fucking run a business doing magic and shit. I fucking I had this new family and stuff, and I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. It was like this. It was like adapting. It was like through COVID. I was just adapting to whatever the fuck I was, and I was a stay-at-home father at the time. Um, <clears throat> so during when my son would take a nap or whatever, I'd t knock out some fucking tricks. This guy wants to talk about all matrix. So I, I just taught all the matrix stuff I knew credited everybody, blah, 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 boom. Um, and, uh, and then from there, that's when I realized like, dude, I'm working way too hard. I'm not smart right now. I'm just behind and I got all this money in what am I, you know? So then I was like, well, wait a second. Then Skype comes out. I'm like, well, I could do the exact same thing, but actually have a one-on-one -on -one with somebody. And then having a one-on-one -on -one somebody like we're doing now and then paying money is a whole different feel of just handing money over and hoping for something to get. Because you already know you got your values worth in the first fucking minute that you meet me. That's the way. And so, yeah, I, I started all that stuff, man. It was, it was, uh, it's weird how it's come. I, I'm, I'm the grandfather of that fucking weird shit, man. It's bizarre, you are. man. You are. It's weird. I, I was the first, I was also the first person, Craig, to have a download. It was the very first website to have a download. Yeah, I, you know, and you you do innovate a lot of this stuff, and a lot of people don't realize. They really that, don't. I don't tell yeah. people, but yeah. I let, I let you guys tell. <laughs> <laughs> but, I think but, that's where I am. I was thinking about this for our interview. I was like, where? I, I, that's kind of where I am in, in, in my life right now. 44 years old. I've been in this fucking business my entire fucking life. Um, I was the grandfather and grandfathered a lot of this stuff in. And, and it's weird because doing these podcasts and doing all these things now that I'm doing, people are starting to really see that or they're starting to make a point of it when they talk about me in public and in, in social media now mm -hmm. without me having to say it or anything. It's really, it's really interesting. Yeah. Really bizarro. But where can people go to get onto your mailing list? Like I want to talk about some of your new projects. Oh, sure. Uh, because mm -hmm. I've been blown away by some of that stuff, but First of all, before I do any of that, I'm going to put it up on the screen at the bottom. Where can people go to get on your mailing list? Because I am telling you right now, you want to get on JM's mailing list because the stuff that he puts out, you can only get through him. So That's right. That's right. Uh, Mentalsites.com. So uh, www.mental, mental, sites, S-I-G-H-T-S, dot com. Perfect. And you can subscribe there and they yeah. can just get notified of all yeah. the stuff. Now let's talk about some of that stuff that's come out recently. Sure, sure. There has been some stuff that you've been showing me that's been blowing me away. And the first thing that I want to talk about, and I was the very first person to buy this. Oh yeah, yeah. Is your version of Charming Chinese Challenge, which I, I do saying your version is doing a massive fucking disservice. I don't want people to say that anymore because it's 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 it even embarrasses. It, I I get cringed out by it because. Troy Hoosier is a, a god, you know what I mean? Like, I've been doing Triple C since yeah. the day that I learned it from, from Troy's book. You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's a staple of my act. And yeah. you showed me this, and I'm like, that's just wiped the original off the face of the planet. I'm sorry, it just has. Yeah, and it's weird because what I showed you wasn't even the actual main routine of, of the inspiration for, for his effect. What, what I showed you, which I'll show here, is a, a different way of reversing the effect. Um, and and st so there's, it's, a, it's a modular idea. Uh, yeah, I was with Troy throughout those generations and those years at Magi Fest here in Columbus, Ohio, when he um, was working on the trick. I, I got to see the genesis of it. I remember him showing me when I was 13 years old. He goes, I'm working on this thing. What do you think? 
And I got to be involved in that creative process at the conventions and stuff. You know, like there wasn't a kicker at the end in the beginning. There wasn't a third coin moment where it appeared in their hand or something. There was any of that, none of that stuff was there in the beginning. Um, so it's really, so it's an ode, man, to him for sure. That's why I don't say it's Justin Miller's version. If you look on the product page, you don't see my fucking name on any of that part, man. And, no. and just before some fucking asshole comes on and says, JM's ripped off Choi Hooser. You, <laughs> you, you, you've been given permission, blessing by Troy. Full blessing from my boy, Full Troy. I, I and was, that's the right way to do it. You know, that's, that's absolutely the Well, right. look, it, it, as we were talking about earlier, it is the Wild West, isn't it? But let's, let's just be real. We can be gunslingers, but we don't have to be fucking total fucking dickheads and assholes out there. Uh, especially when we respect the, the creators uh, and, and the giants that come before us. We stand on the shoulders of giants. Every fucking person does at that level. Um, and I, I was very fortunate to meet Troy when I was about 12, 13 years old at the first ma magic convention I ever went to, which is Magi Fest. And I thought it was, was just a coin god, dude. I, I didn't know about sleeving at that point. I didn't know, you know what I mean? I didn't know about shells. I didn't know, I was being destroyed. It's a great name for the book. I was being destroyed by his material. No clue. I was watching magic for the first time. And I'd already been into magic since I was five. You know, there's, a, there's, a, there's those moments that, and I'm sure you've had them too. But, and, and this is what I love about the, the continuing art of this, of, of this business and, and, and art form uh, and craft is that there's continual moments where you think you're, at a, you're, you're, at a, you're definitely at a certain level. Right, but then something will happen. You'll see something, or you'll experience something from someone else. You'll be like, "Dude, what the fuck was that? Did I just get fucking fried?" Okay, wait a second. Wait, I have no fucking clue. I have no idea. I, I can't even possibly right. And then and you, then you're like, "Oh no, it's just this." And like, "Whoa, what? That's it?" And those are great moments as a creator because it really it helps you go. There's always going to be somebody better than you. There's always going to be somebody better than you. And that person has to understand that too. It's a, it's a bizarre thing. It's a really bizarre thing. So this gives ode to him for sure. In no way um, do I take credit for anything except for, I just thought it'd be cool to tie the ends together and see what you could do. Cause it, I thought it'd be a really interesting challenge at that time, like a real challenge. Um, so you've heard of a uh, uh, pickpocketing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You've heard of pickpocketing. This is a little different. This is called pit pocketing. So I don't know if you know this, uh, but back in the day, they used to use these. These were called purse strings. You've heard of purse strings? Yeah. These well, these these are originally like wallets back in the day. And what they would do is they would untie, they would untie the uh, the cord of the ribbon, and they take their change and they place it onto the ribbon. They put it around their neck. And this became like a money wallet for ancient civilizations. A lot of people don't know that. It's very true, actually. Um, and so they have to untie it and all that other stuff. So what's interesting about this, though, is that you, if you know what um, if you know what pickpocketing is, you're taking something away, right? You're taking something away, hiding it, taking it for yourself. Well, pickpocketing is a little bit different. Uh, let me show you what I mean here. Got three Chinese coins. You could examine these if you were here. Totally doesn't matter, honestly. And the first coin, make sure we get a clear view here. The first coin is kind of interesting. If you take it and hold it right about here, you can get the first one to go on. That's the first one. The second one's interesting. Not because I'm using a different coin. The second one's interesting for a totally different reason. Uh, this one's kind of cool because you can actually see it go on at that spot. And there's the second one. Now, the last one's my favorite. Those two are interesting. The last one's my favorite, though, and I'll show you why. Can you see it? Yep. Because now I've got to get it onto the thread in a different way, a totally different way. This is how I do it. This is A lot of people think I'm keeping it in my hand, so I'm going to sneak it away, but that's not the case at all. You need to understand that. If I just give it a little bit of heat, no, it's not actually done yet, hold on. You'll be able to see it right when it happens. And that's all three coins. And now I can put my money back on my neck and go to the market. That's fucking beautiful. Oh, thanks, man. 
Yeah, so um, I'm, I'm, in, I'm a huge fan of this trick. Uh, and again, that's not even the main routine of the trick. That's just something you can do with it. Uh, another thing you can do. And it's modular too. So when the coins come off, um, the, last, or the second coin happens in their hand. Um, also for this one, you can actually do this in their hand as well. So you can take this coin out, show the two coins, place this into their hand, like over here or whatever, take this coin, vanish the coin, whatever you wanna do. And then of course, all three coins will be back on this in their hand. So you can do that as well. That's incredible. Yeah, I just, I just put it, I just uh, debuted this at my, uh, my, my 2020 lecture. I'm very excited about it. And that was the other thing, I didn't wanna put this out before I got Troy's blessing. And that's available if, <clears throat> if people aren't watching you. Mentalsites.com. Yes, mentalsites.com. It's pre-sale right now for 35. You get the, the three coins onto uh, the, the cord that is, that is a completely soldered, glued on there and altered for a reason. And then you get uh, three separate coins. So you get six coins all together. And then you get the jewelry bag, download, and then additional thoughts by Gregory Wilson as well. That's great. You get, I think there's like three routines on there, three different routines. Awesome. That's awesome. Thank you so much. I think it's gonna, I think people will start uh, using this again. I'm, I'm excited. Yeah, you can yeah. also get it through my package deal for my uh, lecture package. It's on the same site, but it's Tell a different package deal. Tell us about that. What's that? Yeah, the package deal is firsthand. Uh, well, here, I'll show it to you. I'll just show it to you. So the package deal, uh, normally all this stuff would cost $200, but um, I'm, it's for the lecture tour. It's only a hundred. So you get three blind dice. This was a big sellout on my uh, uh, website. I only had like 14 to sell at the time, but I put these together for the actual package deal. Um, I don't even know that. You wanna see it? Yeah. Okay, this is a worker, dude. You, you're gonna love this one. You're gonna love this one. I got a feeling I'm spending more money with this interview. <laughs> <laughs> I've always loved. I've, that's funny. I've always loved two in the pocket, one in the hand, or two in the or two in the hand, one in the pocket, right? I've always loved that. But I, I'm. Do I look like I fucking carry sponge balls around? No, I don't fucking carry sponge balls. Does it look like I fucking carry nuts and bolts around? No, I don't carry nuts and bolts around. You know, what I do carry around my love and passion for gambling. So I created an effect based on that. So I love love gambling. <laughs> one of my favorite things to do. Uh, that's why I don't do it that often. Never do the things you love all the time. It's a bad idea. Uh, can you guess what uh, gambling game I love the best, the most? I'm guessing craps. That's exactly right. You put the dice together. Nicely done. You're a smart cookie. Do you know what trick dice are, sir? Have you ever heard of trick dice? No. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Stop being a spectator. I want a full Craig Petty. <laughs> Hey, Craig yeah. Petty, you know what dice are? You know what trick dice are? I know what trick dice are. All right, cool. So you know the idea is either loaded dice or to try to get a certain number or whatever. One of these, and you'll notice that most trick dice that I've seen, they're not clear, right? I've never seen a, a clear trick dice. But one of these, one of these, just one, is a trick die. Just by looking at them. Actually, if you were here, you could feel them, whatever. I wouldn't ask you to roll them because I don't want you to see which one it is, but which, let's just go. Which one do you think? Uh, the middle one. Boom. Middle one. You're positive, right? Yeah. Cool. Put those back inside. This would go inside their hand at this point. Craig, do you have any idea how you know this is a trick die? Uh, no. They disappear. When they disappear, they reappear with the other two. You found the trick die. Nicely done, sir. Very nicely done. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. Which one do you think it is? Uh, the one on my left. The one on your left. Which one's that? <laughs> <laughs> the one nearest the back. This one right here. The right one. Yep. You're positive. Yep. No question. Nope. Perfect. Actually, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll put this in the pocket. When I put it in the pocket, if it is the trick die, what's it supposed to do? Jump. It's supposed to come right back and join the others. You've gotten twice now, so it's amazing. You're amazing. Can I kind of explain a little bit how I do this? Because it is a magic trick. It is, a, it is an actual magic trick. What I, I do is I take the two dice, I place them in the hand. I take this dice and I place it inside my pocket. And when I do that, I actually don't really do that. See, I'm actually keeping this 
through slates and diabolical thinking and a little thumb palm there, right? And I get the other two down near the bottom. So when you're not looking, I just go, oh, look what time it is. And then I've got, I've got all three die. Mm -hmm. Now you know how it's done. If I really do remove one, how many is left? Two. No, 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 one, but it's the black one with the other dots around it. You didn't see that one? <laughs> well, if you didn't see that one, you definitely didn't see that one. I think that's, and I love playing crabs. It's my favorite thing to do. <laughs> favorite thing to do. Then I learned as a magician, well, the problem with craps is, is I have to go into the casino, right? I don't yes. like to travel that much. So I've learned one thing. Being a magician, I don't actually go into the casino now. I just kind of make it happen. So that way, when I go to the casino, I can just start playing. That's great. That's awesome. That is called three blind dice. That is a worker. It's a fucking worker. That's exactly what I knew you appreciate it as a worker. Yeah, that is so commercial. It's so commercial. It's, I love the moments. I love, and these are the dice, by the way, I usually use the big ones because mm -hmm. it's just out of nowhere. It's like, oh. it's great. yeah, so you get that. You get uh, the Great Escape, which is the, um, the new one. Yeah. Story Who's Your Blessed One. You get Perception 2.0 by myself and Paul Harris. Something I put out a long time ago and I just upgraded it. Uh, hand, handmade gimmicks and everything. You get a T as a CC wallet, but I use that wallet to show you how to make a wallet for first hand. So you get that as well. You get first hand. Craig Petty knows about this one. This was on AGT actually. We got Smoothini second place using first hand. Um, this is also a gift now because they messed up on the side shot. So if you put in Smoothini AGT, it shows up him picking up the, the, the stack of bills with the magnet. So it exposes it. It's awesome. Can't, it's so exciting. It's, soli it's solidified in time now. Oh. <laughs> and then you get Paul Hader, uh, Paul Haters. That's hilarious. You get Paul Harris's, uh, Paul Harris' uh, Creators Kit. Oh, wow. Tons of thread, tons of shims, tons of wax, tons of everything that you need to create gimmicks, to repair gimmicks. This is the thing. Talk about being creative. You sit down with this, you see what you can come up with, then you'll see how creative you are. This is a must for any of those people. And then first hand, or Freedom Pack. So yeah, I was, <laughs> I was speaking to Sean Farquhar the other day, uh, just yeah. yesterday, and he, um, him and I were saying that the problem with magicians these days is they bring so, so much new stuff comes out all of the time that people forget about some of the amazing tricks that came out a year, two years ago. It's almost like, yeah. you know, and he told a story about how somebody asked him how much it would be for torn to pieces. Mm -hmm. and, and he gave them the price and, and they went, well, don't I get a discount because it's been out for so long? And he went, oh. the, price, the price is the price. Exactly. Like, now as it was back then. That's what, exactly what? right. Count it. And it, he was getting really, you know, you know, Sean, obviously, he doesn't get, yeah. really, it was kind of peeing him off a bit. And yeah, it, it, it is that thing. It's like people, magicians think, oh, something's got a shelf life. It's no good anymore. But there's some absolute quality pieces of magic. That yeah. Newer people that have come into magic in the last few years won't have known about. And yeah. Is one of those. It is amazing. I love. Oh, it. thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Hundred percent on the Wizard product review back in. The yes, day. you did. Yes, you did. And Dave, Dave only gave it fucking ninety-eight or ninety. Uh, he fucking sucks. Just ignore it's, it. I, I agree. It's horrible. <laughs> so yeah, this is Freedom Pack. This is the very first effect that I created after the uh, divorce, after the the breakup and everything. This is the first trick that brought me back into the magic world. Every time I see that, it blows me away it it's such a great visual it's just it's just look at that it's a fucking beautiful visual oh i had a lot of people during freedom pack they were like yeah but can you give the box away what the fuck are you giving boxes away for what, what are you doing and by the way if, if you have a here's a one of my biggest pet peeves with magicians who just don't seem to understand this is that not everything's supposed to be signed. Not everything's supposed to be handed out. Not everything's supposed to be, when do we get this fucking idea that if I can't hand it out, if I can't have it signed, it's, it's shit. That makes no fucking sense whatsoever. None whatsoever. Like, let's, let's give you an example. 
firsthand, I got a lot of flack with this. It sold like crazy, but I got a lot of flack from certain people. And they were like, well, won't they want to examine your wallet? And I, my first thought was, my first thing back to them was, why are you handing people your fucking wallet? That's the entire point of why I put it in a wallet. So now there's a justification for you weirdos who think everything needs to be handed out that you go, I'm going to put my fucking wallet away now. There's no reason anybody should go, let me see your wallet. Now they might say it has something to do with the wallet. And then as you come back in to grab the wallet to show them, you get rid of the gimmick at the same time, which is an easy thing, just slides right off. And you go, no, it's just a regular wallet. You can show that that makes sense. Who the fuck, who the fuck asks people for their wallets? Nobody, nobody does that except thieves, right? So it's, it's one of the most silliest things I've ever heard in my life. And that's why I put first hand in the wallet for that reason. You're not going to fucking ask somebody about their wallet. That's great. But yeah. Yeah. You, you know, for, I can't think of a better opener than, than Freedom Pack. You know, that if you're going into a card set, there is no better way to open. That's it. why I did it. That's why I opened with it at my Magic Castle uh, gig, dude. 100%. I knew Freedom Pack had to be in there. And then with the time traveling thing, where they uh, have a, they sign their name on a card, the card gets laid down, right? Yeah. And then I say, actually, I, I don't, you know, the easiest way is just to go back in time. Like, remember when the pen didn't exist? Remember when the cards were in the card box? Do you remember all that? Do you remember when I asked you to actually take out a card? And then I did what I think I actually just sign your name on it, right? You signed your, and then I hand the pen back to them when they turn the card over in uh, in their lap or whatever in their in, in front of them. There's no the the signature is completely gone, so it's a whole time traveling thing with the pen and everything, man. Yeah, right, absolutely. I can't believe you know, I, I wouldn't blow smoke up your ass. You know that I I can't believe that you've got all of that stuff for a hundred dollars. That's insane. Yeah, everything's a hundred bucks, man. Um, it's a two hundred dollar package deal while supplies last because I don't have a lot of these left, so they won't be in the package anymore. You know what I mean? Um, I have to make some more of these up. Uh, there's certain things just won't be like when I run out of DVDs, the, the price will change and then I'll reflect that price to what I have then. Right. It'll still be a crazy deal, but uh, yeah. So that's what it is. Great. Yeah. I want to talk about one other thing. Yeah. That has become highly talked about and mm -hmm. that's the dew drop change. Oh shit. <laughs> oh shit. Of course you didn't really that's the to me, that's the Tic Tac thing to me, too. It's, yeah, it's you know, you, know uh, you did a, a three-day lecture on this, which I've obviously, I, I couldn't make any of the sessions because I'm sure. so tired with two kids. Sure, so no, I, of course, of course. It's 10 o'clock in the morning, but I've got it on my, my, um, my hard drive to, to watch, and I've seen you do this, and it's so insane. Are you running another session on it again, or are you keeping it like really? Expensive? Well, I'm. I don't know how I'm going. I might just run a session on the do drop, do drop change itself, just a one day thing, which was that one day, but just make it now just for everybody else and say this is the one time thing. It's going to be probably like forty dollars or something like that, because that's what two hours of material that I that I gave in that third yeah. night. I think it's two hours, and it was all do drop material, all of it. it is. Yeah best change with coins it literally i thank you and i have to i have to accept that humbly but i accept that gratefully too and i have to agree with you uh from my point of view uh usually i'm pretty humble about this shit this fucking thing is ridiculous man this thing rocks this thing looks like cgi i was able to combine physics and depth perception and and light into one fucking change um yeah i'm with you on this one dude it's uh it's, this one holds a special place in my heart. You know so, what? Uh, yeah, actually, show me. I'll just show you the change itself. So we have a silver coin that changes to a Chinese coin. That is beautiful. It's ridiculous. It looks ridiculous, yeah. It's that ridiculous. It looks, like, it looks like goddamn CGI. It looks like CGI. So now what you can do, you can do some really cool copper silver type shit. So now um, Chinese coin here, silver coin here, silver dollar, a uh, peace dollar actually. So ch Chinese coin goes here, silver coin here. They change places. You can see them change places. Uh, Chinese coin goes back inside one more time. You can see it happen. 
that leaves just those coins. But it's easy how I do this. See, I just use two silver coins for this trick. It's the only way you can do the trick. Oh, shit. <laughs> it's just... Craig, I want to show you something kind of cool. Uh, so we have a silver coin and Chinese coin, right? Just yeah. uh, two coins, right? Two coins? Yeah. Two coins, right? Two coins, a Chinese coin, silver coin. You can yeah. see that that's a peace dollar, right? No, seriously, two coins. Like a lot of people, why would you think I'm like, just two coins, man? No shells, just two coins. Uh, so we're gonna play a little peekaboo game, right? Silver coin goes here. What's here? Silver. What? What's here? Oh, sorry, that's the that's the Chinese. That yeah. is again. We'll play a little peekaboo game. Silver coin goes here. What's here? <laughs> Chinese. Beautiful. Hold on, let me do it again for you. It's a little confusing. By sheer willpower, I was able to make that coin jump from one place to the other. I'll do it again if I squeeze again. Just sheer willpower, I can cause the other coin to look like it goes back inside, leaving the Chinese coin here. If the Chinese coin's on top of the hand, again, what's uh, in the hand? Silver. Very good. It actually happens very quickly. I don't know if you saw it happen. That's the silver coin. If the silver coin's here, what's over here? A Chinese. Forget it. It's a game of imagination, and our imagination is gone. That's just fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Thank you, man. You know what I love about that? You know, some people talk about, uh, and I don't want to diss the guy, but some people talk about Ponta the Smith. And yeah, yeah, yeah. My problem with his material is you just can't fucking tell what's going on. It's yeah. Just, uh, what, what, yeah. And they just watching it. Whilst that is just like you said it, like CGI. It looks like it's just changing. Yeah. As it drops in the other hand. It's yeah. Like, it, it, it feels like it's changing in midair. It feels like it changes right. Here. It's fucking weird, dude. It's so bizarre. So, one more question for you. What's next? This is something I've asked a lot of people I've been interviewing. Mm. What's next? Because what, what have you got left on your bucket list, man? If you stopped now, if you never performed again, if you never created another trick, yeah. if you never did anything, your legacy is set. But mm. you're not stopping. You're just getting started with the podcast. And the, it, it feels like, like you're one of the few creators that since COVID hit, you've stepped your game up even further. So yeah. what's, what's next? <clears throat> where, where, where are you planning on going in the next few months, years? I really want to get the, I really want to focus on the live pod, uh, uh, call in podcast. I did the test drive for that. It was just fucking great. I loved everything about it. So I really want to change. I want to get the phone number for the podcast number. I'll put it up here. Right. So every time it's on, they know exactly which number to call. Um, <clears throat> I want to do as many podcasts and interviews that I'm doing this kind of thing right now. Uh, I want to get, um, this other generation to know that I'm not just the creator of all the stuff that they're doing, but, uh, or most of the stuff that they're doing. Uh, but I'm also pretty smart. I'm a pretty smart person. Uh, and I want them to see a different side of me too. Um, so I'm really, I'm really just kind of focused on getting all my energy out into the world, seeing me right now, whoever wants to see me and, and be a part of my little life. Uh, I'm, I'm down, you know? Yeah. That's kind of where I'm at right now. And you've done a lot of TV, TV work and consulting. Yeah. Is that still something you want to do? Or? I'm doing it right now. I'm consulting for AGT right now for a contestant. Um, I'm doing uh, I'm doing a lot of private sessions as well. Uh, so yeah, I'm just you know I'm not just trying to keep busy. I'm trying to really take as many creative forces as I can and, and harness them and move them in a in a place that's in a uh, so that they start making money. They start making they generate um, uh, just a a way to make a living through COVID right now. Yeah. Right. Yeah, And, you know, it's great to see that you are doing something rather than just giving up and just like, you know. Oh, dude, I'll tell you, I sat in that fucking bed, man. There was a moment in time when this COVID thing started and I remember sitting in bed. I'm like, and I just lost those $50,000 worth of gigs. And I was like, oh, you have two choices, fuck face. I call myself that sometimes. So th that way, if I call you, anybody else that, I'm talking to other people, don't feel offended. I, I fucking roast myself way more than I roast you motherfuckers. Trust me. <laughs> I've called myself fuck face and fucking douche, twat, fucking whatever. Um, I sat there, I was like, listen, listen, fuck face. You can just lay in this bed and die right now. Okay, just lay in bed and die. 
or get up and figure something out. You have to figure something out. I've always been one of those people, my, me and my dad talk about this all the time. He's the, set, he's the exact same way. If it's possible that it's hereditary, I definitely got it from him. Don't ever tell me I can't do something because I'll do it better and harder and faster than anybody else has ever fucking done it. And don't tell me I can't do something where it's not possible or it's not, I, you know, you've done good kid up to this point. No, 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 no. Uh, d don't ever tell me that because that just puts a fire under my ass more than anything. I, I've never stopped. It's not in my, it's not in my nature to stop. It's not my DNA for some reason to stop, man. And I've been in a lot of weird places down up. I've been, I've been money. I've been poor. I've been in between. I've been, you know, ostracized. I've been put back into the community. And I mean, even the church and all that shit. And I've still fucking continued. I don't know, man. I don't know. I think some people just have it inside them to keep doing, you know, what they have to do until they die. Right. Yeah. One of my favorite people of that is a uh, uh, Cooper fucking what's his name? Cooper. Uh, he died on national television. When he in the middle of a magic trick, right? Of a show. Right in the middle of a magic show, yeah. Holy shit, dude. Wouldn't that be the greatest way to go, man? I'd love that. Just fucking not not doing dishes. Ugh. Not taking a shower, slip and fall. Like, oh no. You you you're in it. You're in the zone. You're doing your thing. People are fucking losing their minds and then boom. Fuck yeah, dude. That would be the best way to go. Right the now. worst way would go is on fire with people throwing swords at you and sharks are nibbling your feet. <laughs> <laughs> you thought about that way too much. <laughs> I just thought about that and that was way too much. <laughs> and, and here's a question for you. Um, yeah. Wrap things up. <laughs> yeah. Um, you've never it's been, been so much fun, by the way. Absolutely. A oh, blast. Amazing. We have to do a follow-up on these as well. because I, I know, would love to. Yeah. So You've got to be on my podcast. Please, please be on my call and podcast. Of course. Of course. That would be awesome, man. Hell yeah. Very cool. A heartbeat. And, and have you got, um, actually, before I ask you this question, where can people check out the podcast? I know it's not officially launched yet. But it's not. I don't have any. This is the next project I want. The, that's a personal project of mine that I'm going to start working on more. Um, we did the test run on Facebook. It's, it's on Facebook right now. You can just go through my feed um, on my wall uh, somewhere. It's probably like a week away, a week before or whatever. Uh, but uh, it was a, like a two hour thing, one, uh, you know, and it was great. Loved everything. It was a, it was a test run for sound. It was a test run for everything. And um, the call in podcast or something I really love. I, I wanted to be a radio uh, host for so long. I've always wanted that. I have the voice for it. So I have one of those voices that's a radio guys. What do you think? You know, I've, I've the DJ fucking um, I have like the strip club DJ voice mixed with like the morning zoo fucking like so it's either like uh you've got dj on the main stage working awfully hard for you ladies and gentlemen be sure to take care of those that take care of you all night long welcome to hot peppers and then um i got that voice but i also have the uh you listen to wnci 97.9 that was journey <laughs> Mate, you've missed your calling. That's amazing. Well, I want. That's why I want to do the podcast. That's why I want to do the live calling podcast. Because uh, I've always, I'm a huge Opie and Anthony fan. I don't know if you know who those people are. Yeah. They had one of the greatest fucking radio shows ever, and I, I, I love that kind of comedy. I love that kind of honesty and openness. Uh, and I already have that with my fans and customers, the openness. So I want to kind of just expand it more. That's great. That's great. Yeah, there's one thing nobody can ever say is was I was a fake or a phony. Not like a lot of these other motherfuckers. Well, look, I'll, I'll go on record and people know our history, but I'm telling you right now, you're one of the hardest working guys that I know. Mm -hmm. And I know that if I hear something come from your lip, you are 100% straight. You and I do my research too. I always do my research. I don't just, people think I, uh, a lot of times I'll just say stuff off the cuff. Like, dude, you, you should think about that more. I did think about it. There's a reason I'm posting it. <laughs> Uh, but you, I, I will say this. This is interesting. Uh, speaking of that image of Justin, that because that that I, it's weird. Because I, I I know I've changed drastically. I don't post those things anymore. I don't really put my energy into those things anymore. If something still, like if there's something that really really bothers me, I might say something. But honestly, I just focus on putting magic out and lectures and fucking content and as much of me possible that people want to see. Um, but before I was definitely very argumentative and a very, but I would always have my facts. I would always know because I wouldn't talk about something unless I knew what I was talking about. Uh, 
it's funny how that has hurt me and helped me in my career. It's bizarre. I lost a lot of people, but I gained a lot of people. It's really bizarre. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm of I'm of the uh, the old school. If everybody's talking about you, then maybe it's you. But if some people are talking about you this way and the other people are talking about you differently, mm, maybe it's them. Hmm. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I'd agree with that. I'd agree with yeah. that. But I want to ask you one last question. Yeah. Why have I not seen JM on Penn and Teller fool us? Uh, I get that. I've gotten that a lot, actually. I've gotten that. <laughs> You're the perfect guy to fool them and be yeah. entertaining, and yeah. you're better than a million other guys. That uh, no offense to anyone that's been on Penn and Teller, but I'd put you. You know uh, why? Why I, it makes no yeah. sense. It makes no sense to me. Well, the short answer is I've already fooled them when I, when I did Wizard Wars. I know I fooled them with the uh, with the uh, bowling bag or the bowling ball and the uh, shark. So I already know I fooled them. So it wouldn't be to fool them. Obviously, it'd be a great thing for a sizzle reel and for personal use, no question. And for street cred, I guess. Uh, in my mind, though, I already fooled them. I don't need to fool them. The long thing is, um, I've been thinking about it lately, especially through COVID. And I, I, I was, I've been talking to Gregory Wilson about some ideas and some tricks. And uh, I don't know. I might. It's possible. I might do it. I might, I might try it. Um, the only reason I'd want to do is for the personal reasons and just to have a trick that I sell to be on that fucking thing and then people buy it. Dude, do you know how many fucking, fucking DVDs? Do you remember when David Blaine did the, um, the special where he stepped on the, the nail and then off of the nail? Do you remember that? Okay. Do you know that that was on the cutting room floor? They didn't make the special, right? But Illusionist had it on their website they had every they, this is when illusionist really blew up they made sure that whatever tricks that blaine was doing that they were sellable afterwards and they were the only place you could get them mm. brilliant idea by the way remember that yeah the nail trick was one of them totally didn't show up on the special do you know i mean they fucking sold though holy shit can you imagine if it was on the special and, it, and he would have done so having your trick done in those kind of situations is a really good idea you know oh, that's kind of what Sean Farquhar did. Yeah, went, no, that's exactly what he did. He did it three times that way. <laughs> exactly. He basically was a dealer, dem. One hundred percent. And I fooled you. Give me my goddamn trophy. <laughs> you know yeah. how many sales I just made in my fucking head when I leave here and edit this? <laughs> exactly, dude. No, I mean, look, I'm not trying to. I'm not in this just all for the money, but uh, but. It's nice to make a living through this thing called COVID. I gotta make, I gotta eat too, motherfuckers. I need toast on butter. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Dude, it has been amazing. It has been Dude. absolutely fantastic. This was, this is a great, great interview, man. I was so happy to uh, to do this with you. A really, really a special place. This, this holds for me, man. Seriously, yeah. it's great. It's great to come full circle. And, it totally is. And I'm going to go on record for anybody who doesn't doubt it. I think this man is an absolute fucking legend. And oh. uh, I mean it. I mean it. You know, uh, you, you're awesome. I do so much of your material and I am your biggest fan, Justin. I really am. Craig, I really appreciate it, man. Thanks for having me on, dude. I've always been a fan of yours, even through our little tiffy tiffy. Uh, I always did, man. I always, but I, I got to ask you one question before we yeah. leave. Let me ask you a question. Why did you have a fucking hole puncher in the sauna? <laughs> Fuck no, it was Dave Ben's idea. But oh, oh my God. Oh, that makes a lot more sense now. Yeah, it that was, was a, the one thing that set me off. That was how it started, man. It's how it the weight. And so we did this DVD called Slim. Yeah. And he was like, oh, there's a sauna there. Let's go do a fucking trick. Yeah, let me fucking hear. Do you, does somebody have a fucking hole puncher that I can fucking do? No. But and you're, in a, right and you're in a sauna and you're in a sauna with your clothes on too. I was like, I was like Jesus Christ, dude. I'll tell you right now, you know, obviously, if the whole Vegas thing had actually happened, because obviously it was all building up to you and me having this. That would have been so much fun. Been it would have so been fun. great. But you know what I planned? I've never told anyone this. Hmm. I'll tell you right now. I, I spoke to Dave Penn about this. And I said to him, there's no fucking way in hell I'm going to be Jay. Not <laughs> fucking chance in hell i'm just so out of my depth and we had this whole idea because we were going to do it on the strip if you remember uh -huh. and we were hopefully get you to go first and you were going to be doing your thing and blow people away 
And I, my plan was just completely take the piss. I was going to do the ball and the bars. Right? Oh, that's funny. But what I was going to do is I was going to do the ball and the bars and I was going to make the ball disappear. And I was going to point up at the top of the Rio. <laughs> and Dave Penn would be there holding the fucking ball. And that's why I had planned. That's what I was oh going to do. Oh, my God. You, may, you better have made sure it was signed. That would have been cool. That would have <laughs> just slowly the camera comes down. Everybody sees it. Yeah. You would have won. You would have won. You would have fucking won. That would have yeah. been the plan because that was the. Here's only me fucking. Here's me Miller, whatever the error that was, doing fucking sleeving or doing whatever or doing whatever, and then you go, hey, look up there, it's right up there. There you go, I won. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> but uh, you know, hopefully, I'd like you back on here again. I, I think there was. A I little... would be honored, dude. Anytime you want, man. This has been an absolute pleasure and so much fun. That'd be awesome. And one more time, I'm putting it up at the bottom. My big piece of advice, go on this man's website, subscribe to his new, uh, newsletter, buy all of his stuff, and uh, get that package deal. I can't believe, $100, I can't believe that. I agree, it's pretty crazy. It really is. JM, thanks very much. Thanks, brother, appreciate it. Thank you so much. Take care, guys, we'll see you next week. <laughs>